Alright, in this video I just want to talk about deriving the derivative formulas for tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. And what we're going to use is, we're basically just going to use uh, the fact that the derivative of sine is cosine and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So sometimes people uh, forget their derivatives, so uh, just kind of a quick way to show you, you know, just don't memorize them, I mean, do memorize them, but also be able to justify them if you forget them, because uh, I think it's not too bad to do. So, well, okay, suppose we want to figure out the derivative of the function tangent x. Well, all we're going to do is we're just going to simply rewrite tangent as sine over cosine. And now all we're going to use is just the good old quotient rule. So remember the quotient rule says if you have one function divided by another and we take the derivative, it says we get the bottom times the derivative of the top uh, minus the function on top times the derivative of the bottom all over the denominator squared. So we're just going to use that property here. So, okay, so if we take the derivative here of sine over cosine, well, okay, so we'll leave the denominator alone. That's just cosine x. If we take the derivative of the numerator, so the derivative of sine will give us cosine. Uh, stick our negative in between there. And then it says we leave the numerator alone, so we'll have sine x. And then we simply take the derivative of the denominator, so the derivative of cosine x is going to be negative sine x, all over the denominator, which is cosine x squared. But notice now uh, we've got negative sine x times negative sine x, which is going to give us positive sine x. Well, cosine times cosine, that's really cosine squared x. Sine times sine, that's just going to give us sine squared x. And remember this identity, remember that cosine squared plus sine squared, that simply equals 1. So you also have to remember a few trig identities in here. Um, so cosine squared plus sine squared, which is what we have in the numerator, that's just going to equal 1 over cosine x. But again, we could kind of, if you want to, think about breaking this apart. That's 1 over cosine uh, times cosine. And you could even write an extra 1 in the numerator. Well, 1 over cosine x is going to give us secant x. And again, uh, we've got another 1 over cosine x, which would give us another secant x. And we would get our derivative secant squared x. So the derivative of tangent is just secant squared, and that's, that's where it comes from. So let's go through the other ones here uh, a little more quickly. Uh, we'll do cotangent here pretty quickly. So, so the derivative of cotangent... Well, that's just going to be the derivative of, so tangent is sine over cosine, cotangent is going to be cosine over sine, and we'll just do the same thing. We'll just use our nice little quotient rule formula. So our nice little quotient rule formula here. Again, so it says you get whatever's in the denominator, so sine x, the derivative of the numerator, um, so the derivative of cosine will be negative sine x. Minus, we'll take the numerator, cosine x. We take the derivative of the denominator. So the derivative of sine, again, is just going to give us another cosine. That's all, all over the denominator squared. So sine x squared. Now, notice in the numerator, uh, we would have negative sine x times sine x, which will give us negative sine squared x. And then we've got a negative cosine squared x. Again, all over sine x squared. But now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make use of our identity. Uh, both terms in the numerator have a negative, so we can just factor that out. And then we would have sine squared plus cosine squared. Again, all over uh, sine x squared. Well, again, we know the identity. Sine squared plus cosine squared, that just equals 1. So really, we have negative 1 times 1, which is just going to give us 1 over sine x squared. But just like before, we can think about that as being sine x times sine x. And you can always put an extra uh, multiplication by 1 in the numerator. Well, 1 over sine x is going to give us cosecant x. And we've got another 1 over sine x, which will give us another cosecant x. Um, let's not forget about our negative. I totally left that out there. So. Our negative 1 here still needs to be uh, out front. So we've got 1 over sine times 1 over sine, which will give us cosecant, cosecant. Let's stick our negative in there. So now we've got negative cosecant x 
quantity squared, or negative cosecant squared x. So again, nothing too crazy. It's just using the quotient rule, uh, being careful with your algebra. Hey, don't forget things like I almost did. Uh, let's justify the other two really quick. So we wanted to do the derivative of secant. Well, to take the derivative of secant, that's just the same thing as, we can really write the, uh, secant as 1 over cosine x. And again, you could use the quotient rule on this, but to me, uh, even easier than using the quotient rule, when you have a constant in the numerator, um, this is all cosine x to the first power in the denominator. I'm just going to bring that upstairs, and that would give me cosine x to the negative first power. So now I'll take the derivative, and in this case, uh, we'll just have to use the chain rule. So the negative 1 comes out front, we'll leave the inside alone, we'll take 1 away from the exponent, which will give us negative 2, and then the derivative of uh, cosine will be negative sine x after we apply the chain rule. So let's see, the negative and the negative, those would cancel out and make a positive. Sine x is on top. Um, we would have cosine x in the denominator, but that would go to the positive second. Okay, so rewriting this expression. And again, you can think about this as being sine over cosine times 1 over cosine. Well, sine over cosine is just tangent x. Cosine, or excuse me, 1 over cosine gives us secant x, and now we have our derivative for secant x. So the derivative of secant x is, uh, usually people say it's secant x tangent x, but hey, uh, same thing as tangent x times secant x. Um, so to prove the derivative of cosecant, last but not least, uh, let's do that one. So again, nothing crazy here, just again, just showing you Again, uh, there's too much stuff to memorize in math, so it's always good to be able to justify things and know, uh, know where those formulas are coming from so you can reconstruct them. So cosecant, I'm going to do the same thing. Well, cosecant, that's just 1 over sine x. But now I'm going to pull my sine x up to the numerator. So we can write that as sine x all raised to the negative first power. When we take the derivative, again, we'll use the chain rule. So the negative 1 comes out front. We'll leave the inside alone. Take 1 away from the exponent. Multiply by the derivative of sine, which is going to give us cosine x. Okay, so again, you can think about everything as being over 1, if you want to think about them all as being fractions. So the negative cosine x will be left in the numerator. And then the sine x to the negative second, we'll put that downstairs. But again, I could write it um, as sine x squared, or we could simply write that as negative cosine x over sine x times 1 over sine x. Well, negative cosine um, over sine, cosine over sine is going to give us cotangent. 1 over sine x is going to give us cosecant. And again, now we've got the derivative formula for cosecant x. So the derivative of cosecant x is going to be negative. I usually say it as negative cosecant x cotangent x. Again, equivalently, uh, the derivative of cosecant is negative cotangent x times cosecant. So again, if you're taking a test or something, uh, you know, and you're just kind of learning these derivatives, or if you're down the road and you forget them, uh, just, just hopefully you remember kind of the basic trig identities, the relationship for tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. You need to be able to express those in terms of sine and cosine. But after that, it's just using the uh, quotient rule. And as you saw in the first couple examples, we had to use some trig identities as well. But um, again, this to me is kind of now you're, you know, you, you, you're, you're showing where things come from instead of just memorizing. Uh, so, all right, I hope it makes some sense, and I hope it's helpful.